Hey guys, so I don't have a lot of time today, so I just thought I'd come out here. And this goes to what I say before, always find time, like just make time, even if you're only out there for 30 minutes, come out and do something. So I'm out here doing something. Um, I'm specifically looking at the wiring and the wiring diagram and making notes uh, about how I'm gonna do my zip tips. So as you guys know, and I've shown you in a previous video, here's a picture of what they look like. Uh, these are the zip tips that I'm gonna be installing on the ends of my wings. Now these are the like the version two of the zip tips. Now they've got a version three that has a really cool winglet uh, that you know kind of swoops upwards that mine don't have, but yeah, what do you, what do, you do? But uh, yeah, looking at the wiring, it was upside down. Looking at the wiring diagram, um, <clears throat> Yeah, there's a lot for me to learn and a lot for me to know, uh, specifically about what each of these wires do and how to hook everything up. But the one thing I was noticing is how thick this bundle is. So I have not ordered my wires yet. I talked about this previously, how I was running some old wire that I had that I'd used in the computer industry for years. But all that wire, I think the, the it went down to like 22 gauge and I think 20 gauge was as thick as it got. And you look on here and it says on here that like the peak amperage for the strobe is nine amps, right? And nine amps, I think would pop a 22 gauge wire, or at least it would get it hot. So I don't want to deal with that. Um, now, again, I don't know a lot about electronics. I'm not real wise. So if I say something stupid, correct me down below. Um, there's a lot of correcting coming. I foresee it. But anyways, <clears throat> the thing I, the one thing I noticed is, so I've, I've got the shark bite that I've ru uh, run through the, the wings and the diameter, the inside diameter is about that much. So one of my questions was, am I gonna have to run another run of shark bite, shark bite. <laughs> in each wing? Um, maybe. You can see here that this shark bite, this, this hole which runs the entire length of the wing, I mean, it's, it's about the, I mean, there's not much room left right? So this is the piece that would go into the wing, uh, in, into the zip tip rather and plug in. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's not a lot of room. So the question is, what else am I going to have out here? If I'm going to have anything else out here, then I'm going to have to run another shark bite. And there is a good chance I'm going to have other stuff out there. I mean, sometimes I, I know we can put antenna out there. We can put uh, you know, GPS, maybe, I don't know if, if I'm going to put my, well, I'm not going to put like ADSB in and out, out there, I don't think, but there are other things that I could need to run out to my wingtip. And while I've got the wings open, I probably should run another shark bite tube somewhere all the way out there, which that's unfortunate. I hadn't planned for that, but it's probably something that should happen. But mostly what I've been doing, like I said, is I've been taking notes exactly what gauge each wire needs to be based on the recommendation on their wiring diagram, how many feet I'm gonna go. I mean, each wing is gonna need about 15 feet of wire for each wire color and, and whatnot. And then I'm gonna get connectors. And then like at the wing root, I'll do a connector and then wire again from the wing root to the panel to do that work. I also need to buy switches. so. You need, you know, for position lights, taxi lights, landing lights, strobe, and wigwag. I need that. And then the other cool thing is you can do, where's blue and purple? Blue and purple, or is it brown and purple? Whatever. Two of the wires synchro, you know, synchronize the wigwags and the strobe lights. So then I have to be able to run, uh, you know, this purple wire I think is wigwag, strobe. No, wigwag. So the purple wire is wigwag. So again, the, the hookup for this is gonna be like these two are gonna have their own hookup that literally just goes from one wing all the way through the bottom of the plane to the other wing, just so everything's all uh, hooked up. So yeah, wiring, gotta do a lot of that. There's a lot of wiring in my future. <clears throat> and I've got to run uh, the wire for the uh, servo. So the autopilot servo goes right here. And so the autopilot servo is going to sit here and I've got the bracket for it over there, but it sits here and it will do the work of, of moving this for us. And this shark bite that I ran a long time ago is the, the, the control, you know, the wiring for that. So that's why this is solid. Um, I, I don't think it's going to take a lot of wiring. So I think this is probably overkill. Actually, I have smaller shark bite. I probably ran too thick of a piece here, but who cares that that'll be available there. Um, once I get that servo in, which I'm going to order soon, and 
uh, get it wired in, then I can close this sucker down and actually say, I've got a wing finished. Which I would really like to do because my wings have been in this state for years at this point. Um, February 2017. So it's, it's time to get these suckers closed down. Um, but that's the thing I've got to do. I've got to get the wiring done and I've got to get uh, the servo done on this one. The other one's a whole other ball of wax because I've got to do not only the wiring for it, I've also got the heated pitot tube that I got to get and then I've got to cut out the space for the pitot tube and all that other stuff. So there's a lot more on the other wing, but at least I can get this one done. And then I got to finish the tank for this one because the tank on this one's the one that leaks. <sighs> Anyways, so I'm working on all the things there, uh, but I don't have a lot of time out here today. And I'm a little froggy today. I, th I think I slept all night with my mouth open. And so my, my throat is sore. <clears throat> I'm not sick. I don't have the, I don't have the flu, if you know what I mean. Uh, it's just uh, one of those stupid issues. So that's what I come out here to do. And this is what I'm talking about. Sometimes you got to come out to the hangar and just go, there's things I should do and make some plans and try to do it. But you have to accept that, well, you're not going to do a lot. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm not going to do a lot. I'm waiting right now for my wife to come out to help me run some rivets. As I close up the empennage and fuselage, I've got 37 rivets. She made me count 37 rivets that I have to have her come out and help. That's how much she loves doing this. Um, and once I get those done, then I can really get back to the, you know, the thrust of finishing the fuselage. But in the meantime, I got other stuff to do. There's always stuff to do. So that's where I'm at. And yeah, time to go buy wire. Hey guys. All right. So I'm back out here and I am continuing to work on getting all of the rivets and whatnot done underneath uh, the fuselage and empennage, get those put back together, get them, you know, fully done. Had to have my wife come out and help me. I have no footage of that because she hates being on camera. Um, but went and did that and now i'm looking at all the steps that i was supposed to have done to see where we are i have basically this is it There's like the back page here is just the um the diagram of what rivets you're supposed to use and so this is it this is the last steps on this page and then we're on to the next section which is the baggage area so cool um looking at everything I've done. I did all that. So let me, let me go through here and mark these guys off and then I'll show you my work. Um, I'm mostly happy with it. I think there's a couple rivets that I need to redo because they didn't really come out correctly. Uh, but I'll show you those two, but then, uh, then yeah, then it's on to the next thing. Okay. Let's see. Rivet skins or bulkheads. That's this did that set the rivets in the row the bottom skin that's this here did that finish riving aft portion of mid bit that's those did that rivet the mid skin to the baggage door shim that's yeah did that rivet the mid side skins of the f20 fuselage long ones respectively that's up here so you do not and don't don't do those so that's that's done did that Rivet the baggage door using rivets call out. That is, what is it, 2120? That's, that's these to this. I still have to do that one. So this is the one I'm still doing. Install two snap bushings, and then I haven't installed these snap bushings. Uh, and I'll talk about that, actually. So one thing I'm considering doing is changing, um, diverting a little from the plans with regards to the rudder cabling as it goes through the center tunnel. Um, there's a couple grommets here in the back that you're supposed to run the cable through. And instead, I was thinking about using some shark bite in a couple places where the cabling could potentially get pinched or exposed to something else. And that's back here in the baggage or behind the baggage compartment area where this will all be closed off eventually but you know i'm gonna have my battery in here i'm gonna have other stuff in here and if you know something flops out of the way or something comes loose the last thing i want is something jamming up against those uh control cables and preventing me from controlling the aircraft not really a problem here in the center because you have this closed center tunnel to to handle that but back here you don't so i've already got this marked and what i was thinking of doing is just putting some 
shark bike it shark bike in in a couple spots and running it through that and i don't know if it's a good idea or not i don't see why it wouldn't be a good idea um, but that's something i'm considering real hard doing all right so here i sit under the plane and all of the rivets under here i think came out great with a noticeable exception of this one right here on the corner which i just didn't notice when working on it uh, you can see it's it's hanging down a little far and then if you if you get up inside and look at it there's almost no rivet sticking through i think i accidentally grabbed too short of a rivet for that one oops uh, so i'm going to drill what there is to drill out and then redo that one right quick other than that though all the rivets under here look great i'm very happy with how they came out um yeah you will definitely need someone to help under this part. Like I said, there's just no way to be under the plane right here and do this without having another body. Uh, so I'm going to drill this one rivet out and then literally have to bring my wife out here for one rivet. Uh, sorry, honey. <laughs> she hates coming out here. <laughs> anyway, yeah, good times. So real quick, that rivet, absolutely, I put the wrong rivet in there. Um, that should have been a 3-6. And I think the longest rivet I had was a 4.5, you know, 4.5. So that is my screw up. I screwed that up pretty bad. And my wife, I think I vaguely even remember her saying uh, that this is really flattened. I think this is wrong. And I said, I'll look at it in a second. And then I ended up, we just kept going and I forgot to get back up there and look at it. So eh, pay attention. Um, instead, uh, instead of adding it to the squawk list of something that I'm going to deal with later, I'm going to deal with it right now. So I'm going to drill it out and then hopefully the hole is not too boogered up and I can just, uh, because there's like six pieces of metal right now, you know, through there, that's kind of an important rivet. So, uh, hopefully the hole's not too boogered up and I can just use a 3.6. If however, it's boogered up and it's just too loose and floppy woppy in there, I'll upsize the whole thing to a 4-6. So, and then that'll be fine. So that's where I'm at now. Um, yeah, pay attention. So yeah, looking at this, it's not too bad. From what I can see, it's getting to the point where I need like, I need a pair of cheaters, you know, the reading glasses, because pretty much from here, you know, here closer, I, I can't see even with these, um, you know, I look down through this and then it's like, oh, okay, I can see. I've got another pair at home that are the same things that are the, the transition. These aren't, these are transitions. The one I have at home are progressives like these, but the focal point is a little higher. They're meant for looking up close. Don't get old, it sucks. Anyway. So yeah, I'm gonna do this right here, get in here, drill this sucker out, and then move on to the next thing. Okay, so what I have to do, once I fix that rivet over there that I would like to rivet, the one I just showed you, I gotta get in here and start working on putting all these rivet, uh, ribs rather attached to this back. Uh, rib. So I've already done this one. This one is firm and, and the, ri the rivets are set because it was really easy to get to because it's right here. But the rest of these, this one will be pretty easy, but the rest of them I've got to basically get in the plane or stand here and just throw myself through this door. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it yet, but got to do those. There's like 20 rivets there to do. Uh, and then from there, I think that's it. Then we're done with this section and we begin the next section, which is putting on the baggage door and working on that. All right, let's get to it. Well, so I have in my grubby little mitts the bottom uh, rudder hinge bracket service bulletin parts. And um, in grand total, it cost me uh, $33.95 of which almost $5 of it was shipping and another $3 was tax. So like 27 bucks. <clears throat> um, not very many parts, honestly, and that's fine. Uh, I've had a number of you reach out to me and say that you think or you feel that Vans, since they made a mistake, owes us this for free. I thought about it. Um, and I don't agree. I think it's perfectly reasonable that I pay for this. And here's why. Uh, with a car manufacturer, whether, you know, Ford, Chevy, Toyota, whatever, if some 
service bulletin or you know uh, some directive whatever they call it comes out saying hey thing is broken you need to replace it they go through a pretty lengthy process of determining whether or not they would get or it would cost them more in lawsuits versus just replacing the part for everybody which is kind of a dark business practice in my mind i mean if you know something is broken you should fix it well they don't you know <clears throat> vans and i think all experimental air, uh, aircraft manufacturers understand or at least take the 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 position that i, I agree with that we're in this together we're a partner we're building it together and that they realize that you know something might happen i mean there's a lot of parts on this plane and one of them might fail under a specific circumstance and there's other people by the way that their plane is a decade old and it still hasn't failed so um i think it's perfectly reasonable that they charge us the amount it takes them to manufacture this and, and i'm telling you 27 bucks for the you know 20 30 parts that are in here they're not making any profit on this this was just what it took to put it together to build the parts and get it to me um so i don't i just i i think that they're it's a good business practice thing they're open they're honest they're upfront they're not hiding it like i don't get the impression like toyota or i i mean i, I hate to say this i'm willing to bet cessna and cirrus and all those others do this too because they are a certified aircraft they go through this long process of thinking Mm, are we going to pay more in the long run from lawsuits if this fails, you know, kind of risk it? Or is it going to cost us more to just replace it? Like, they do that algebra. Vans doesn't have to do that algebra. It's $27. They just say, hey, here's the problem we found. You can fix it. It's $27. They absolve themselves of liability. In the end, we do the work anyways. So, yeah. No, I don't think they owe us anything. Um, I don't think that it's reasonable to expect them to eat that cost. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, in the end, they could have just not said anything, right? So, anyways, that's my opinion on that. Got the parts. I'm gonna work on them here soon. Uh, I've got a million other things to do. Uh, my wire has also come in, picture of my wire. So I'm gonna go through and begin the wire building process. Um, and yeah, so, uh, all right, let's get to work. All right, time for some real time work. I went and got the floors. So looking at the, you know, what are we doing next in the plans? We're going through putting in the floors or, you know, clicking them down at least before we prepare to get them in permanently. <clears throat> and looking forward to getting my wire done so that I can actually get the wingtips on. Um, part of me is kicking around the idea of actually stopping working on this temporarily just to go to that, just so I can feel like I've accomplished that. <laughs> um, it's been waiting for a while. Okay, I'm not taking, the, not taking the, the bluing off the top yet. I'm just doing the bottoms. Yeah, I may, I may go do that. I may, um, work on my wings just a little again just to make you know make me happy something else i got that's really cool so a toy that i've been wanting to get for a long time and i actually have one already is a 3d printer <coughs> excuse me so i years ago like like a decade ago seriously um nah, i hadn't been that long it's been at least five years because I think I had it or I got it just about when I got the empennage. But um, I got a 3D printer way back when that was designed to print ABS. So now those of you that are not into the 3D printing thing, um, there are multiple different types of printers. Uh, FDM, which is, what is it, Fusion... Uh, I don't know what FDM stands for. <laughs> uh, I'll put it on the screen. 
FDM printer, though, is basically the hot glue gun, right? It, it goes and, and draws around and, and kind of spits out a little bit of schmudge into a place, you know, on this flat bed and, and you build stuff. Um, the problem with most FDM printers is they're kind of low resolution. Um, realistically, though, they're, they're inexpensive. You also have SLA printers, which are your, your uh, either lasers or the, the other ones, which are uh, uh, like LCD screens. Okay, so important, you gotta put the, these back pieces, you kinda gotta put them in first and then lay the whole thing down. But anyways, the, the, the ones that at-home SLA printers are the LCD screens that have a, a resin that you... Uh, there we go. Uh, go to the other one. A, a resin that you, you show and it kind of hardens and then you, you, you know, cure it in UV light. Really cool. Much higher resolution. But more expensive and a stinky process. Well, one of the things that you, the FDM, like the various different FDM printers that are out there, they have different materials that you can print with. Um, and each material has different requirements. Um, the most popular and certainly easiest to print with material at this point is called PLA. And yeah, I don't know what that stands for. It's a type of plastic. I should probably know what the hell I'm talking about before I start talking, but pff, never have before, so why bother starting now? Um, the PLA printer that I used to have was also specifically designed to be an ABS printer. ABS, you know, ABS plastic, which I know you've heard of before, is by its very nature much hotter the, the, the print head on an ABS plastic printer is much hotter, much higher temperature. Uh, and you have to worry about ambient air temperature or the print will like warp and change shape while you're printing. And so the ABS printer that I have now is called an XYZ print or whatever. It's a piece of crap. It basically tries to turn itself into an oven to maintain the the print temperature while it's printing. It just it just fails horribly, and like <clears throat> prints don't stick. The leveling is terrible. Like it doesn't have auto leveling, like which is a very common modern feature. But it's old. It's an older printer at this point. It's it's at least five years old. And remember, this is a very young technology. So five years old is ancient, right? <clears throat> Well, the other day I got a brand new printer, 200 bucks. Oh, and so that ABS printer was almost $800, I think, when I got it. Um, and, and my company bought it for me. So one of the fun things about owning a company is sometimes you have to play with a tax game. And, you know, we were, we were in a tax bracket because of a certain amount of income. And so we were like trying to get out of that tax bracket and we had to spend a bunch of money in order to show a loss to get out of that tax bracket. Legal, perfectly legal, and everyone does it. Well, we got out of the tax bracket by buying myself, you know, a 3D printer and uh, my partner bought himself something else expensive. Um, and we actually did this two, two different years, but yeah, so I, I, it was kind of a, a gift, <laughs> for lack of a better term. Like, I, it's not something I would have bought for myself. And I, just, I had nothing but a horrible time with it the whole time. At this point, it's, it's up in my shop, and I'm probably going to use it for parts. Because, um, uh, I mean, the, the stepper motors and whatnot that are in it are still viable and good. They're, it's just the printer itself is just, just garbage. So I will probably part that out or something. I don't know. We'll see. But what I'm getting to is that I have a brand new 3D printer. <clears throat> it's an FL Sun QQ5 uh, Delta printer. And it's fantastic. I really like it. 
Um, I've had zero issues with it. And I say that knowing full well I'm screwing myself. But um, it's, it's really done, like all the prints, none of them have failed yet, uh, knock on wood. I'm printing on one right now, or printing one right now at, at home. While I'm here, it's off happily printing. And, you know, hopefully it'll be fine when I get home. But, yeah, what a cool thing. I got it specifically because I kind of like the idea of being able to print stuff, you know, um, go through and say, hey, I want to, I need a, a bracket or something that's in a certain shape, or I want to create my own, I don't know, knack events, you know, or, or whatever, something, you know, the very different, the different things that you can do with it is kind of endless, like what do you want to do, right? That's the whole point of a 3D printer. So I'll keep you posted on that. And if I come up with anything clever, I'll find a place, you know, Thingiverse or whatever, to post the part that I'm printing so that we can kind of share it. Um, and yeah, it's awesome. I've also been learning uh, Fusion 360. So Fusion 360 is really cool. Um, now, I don't know if many of you know this, you may not, but I don't know if I've ever talked about this before, but I used to do a lot of um, 3D modeling years ago using Lightwave. Um, so NewTek is a company that made Lightwave. And then like all of the engineering staff at NewTek, I don't know, they had a, a falling out or something and they, they created their own company called Luxology. And so um, I went with them sort of, you know, as a, as a consumer and used their, their product, which was called Moto. And I found it a much better product. But anyways, that's getting off topic. I, I really have always enjoyed 3D modeling. It's kind of one of those things that, you know, that's, I can't really draw with a pencil. Like I'm not really an artist, but for whatever reason, like 3D stuff always just kind of fit my brain. Okay, why are you not fitting? Speaking of fitting, there we go. Um, by the way, to make some out loud noises while you're clicoing, don't don't panic. <laughs> it's okay. But so learning how to do Fusion 360 has been amazing, as the concepts are very very similar to things that I've done before in Moto, uh, you know, Luxology and in, in uh, Lightwave, you know, new tech, Lightwave new tech stuff. So been very cool learning how to do that um, so that I can design my own parts. Um, I have a dream of, ow, pinch myself, of like designing my own aircraft at some point. That is a pipe dream because <laughs> That is a hell of a process that I will probably never tackle. Um, not until I have a whole lot more experience in aviation in general. I mean, like I can't even fathom how you do things like, you know, how do you know when you're looking at a, a you know, a plan or you're looking at you know, the computer screen, how do you know where the center of gravity is? How do you know? I mean, you can plan for it, but it's not going to be accurate. I don't know if Fusion 360 allows you to put like weights and balance information in or, or aerodynamic information. It's like, how do you do all that? Like, there's so much that I just, I don't know that I don't want to even try to tackle it until I learn a lot more. And I think step one is learning the software and then going from there, <laughs> maybe getting my pilot's license, I don't know. Um, fun stuff. But yeah, that's some of the things I've been doing in the background. Whew. And then I've also been playing some games from time to time, even though I should be coming out here and building. Sometimes I just, it's cold or I'm just not really feeling good or whatever, and I don't come out here. So I'll either program, you know, for my job, or I'll do Fusion 360 stuff just to kind of learn it, you know, just to build on it. Like I was building a battery the other day to just learn how to do these things. 
Um, you know, I like to I like to learn, but I also play games. <laughs> so there's sometimes when I have nothing else going on, I'll, I'll whip out the old old gaming stuff. And right now I'm playing um, Cyberpunk 2077. It's actually pretty good. Okay, so those are all put in. And now I'm going to sneak off over there and read what I'm supposed to do now that I have those Clicoed in. I imagine there's going to be a lot more of Clicoing everything in uh, and then a lot of drilling. Got to go through and dr you know, drill all these holes to upsize them. So that's, that's coming. And then I need to probably put in another shark bite run over there for wires. One over here as well. And then, yeah. Oh, good night, endless. Anyways, guys, I really appreciate you joining me today. Um, if you guys have any comments down below, that's the place to put them. And if you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask. I will always answer. I've always said that before. Um, remember, guys, if I can do it, you can do it. Really appreciate you guys. You guys know how to work YouTube, so I'm not going to give you that usual spiel. Um, if you use my builder number down below, which is in the comments down below, though, Vans will send me 100 bucks when you order your kit. It can be any one of the kits, and it's no money out of your pocket. It shows appreciation. Thank you all so very much. I'll see you next time. At some point, you guys are going to get tired of me saying that stuff. <sighs> all right. Let's go see what the next thing to do is.